So we begin this abbreviated version of the Sportsmax Zone with football from the Jamaican top flight. It was Monday night joy for Harbourview, who secured their first victory of the Ray and Nevue Jamaica Premier League season. And it was emphatic as they spanked newly promoted Limehole Academy 3-0 at the National Stadium East Field. A brace from former Glenmuir High standout David Reed and a well-taken goal by Shaquille Bradford in the first half were enough to move Harbourview to 11th on seven points, two points uh, ahead of uh, Limehole, who are 13th with four. Let's first hear from Limehole's head coach, Vanny Clark, who ruled his team's slow start to the contest. I thought that we, we got out of the blocks really, really slow. Um, we didn't get going at all in that first half, and it didn't help that you can see that after two minutes, and then, you know, quickly thereafter, you're down 2 nil. you're always going to be behind the eight ball, and so I thought that we didn't handle ourselves well in the first half. Second half was about... Um, limiting the damage and um, you know trying to get some positives from it other than the second half the intensity was a lot better uh, substitutions really helped and um, you know we, we really managed that period a lot better than we did but of course you know you're already down three nil so it's it, it doesn't help it doesn't do much but um, you know we'll take the positives yeah Vanny Clark there and here is Harborview's national award-winning coach Ludlow Bernard I knew the game was going to be characterized by the, the, the weather elements. The breeze probably played a factor. But the longer the game went, then you could say we took a foot off, we got a bit complacent, you know? And um, probably ruined the fact that we would have allowed Limal one and two look in, and the fact that on the other end of the pitch, weren't clinical enough and good with our decision making. Well, the night continued to be unkind to the Premier League newcomers as Waterhouse FC smashed 10-man Treasure Beach by four goals to one and ending a four-game winless run as Treasure Beach remained 12th on just four points. A brace for man of the match, Andre Fletcher, along with goals from uh, Javain Bryan and Lorenzo Lewin, spearheaded Waterhouse's victory. Assistant coach of Treasure Beach, Fitzroy Ambersley, shared his thoughts on the defeat. We wanted a win. We, we, we were fighting to get back in the, in, the, in the last minute. And then we came out in the second half, continuing the same pattern. But we, we lost out in the last couple of minutes, which is a red card. And then afterwards, no, we still fight, but it wasn't there for us. Yeah, Nikoi Christian, who bagged two assists on the night, was loaded for his attacking prowess by the Waterhouse assistant coach, Damian Gordon. Provider. Um, I think in training I've been working on that free kick. I guess one day we will see it. But overall, I like the leadership quality from him. And also in terms of the overall performance, I, I'm also impressed with Damian Bins as well. And that goal from Elvis, that team came, my word, it would have been a world of inside a goal. of the post. Definitely. But I mean, in, in, in truth, we are growing. Uh, you know, we have some obstacles and we also have some, some setbacks, some challenges. But we have to continue to work on it. So Waterhouse are now sitting fourth with 15 points and joining us in studio to discuss action from match week 10 is our Sportsmax analyst Chris Taylor. Chris, we will in a moment talk about what happened on Sunday, but let's deal with the Monday night matches first. Waterhouse and Harborview haven't been having particularly strong starts to the season, but with good wins last night. Yeah, excellent win. Let's, I mean, with Harborview, an excellent first half as well. I thought Lime Hall, who have been well organized throughout the season a lot of the matches we have seen just weren't that yesterday last night i think they struggled i, I, I don't think there was enough communication in the back line and the structure was was a <laughs> was something that that that, that have of you really tore apart and how of you took the first half away from them good goals yeah great to see david reed um has been coming off the bench a lot got a start on this occasion and and made the most of it with, with two goals one off the head and then went one with his well-known left foot uh but yeah, Lime Hall. You heard Vanny. You heard you heard Vanny Clark saying that they, he thought they came into the half, the second half, better and so on. I think half of you took their foot off the accelerator actually mm -hmm. and tried to just control the tempo of the game. Uh, didn't push as much for the fourth goal, which was a bit of a surprise to me, considering that they have been struggling for goals generally, hard of you. And as you said, this is just their first win of the season. But Shaquille Bradford continues to be so potent up front, as you said, six goals. 
um, in, in as many matches. And, you know, he's really going from strength to strength. I, th I think, you know, just a partner for him is probably what's needed for Harbour to really do damage. Waterhouse, on the other hand, had gone almost 370 minutes without a goal. And then scored in the last minute against Portmore in that in that one all tie and then came into their own very well in this match. I really I mean for a lot of the game it was closer than the scoreline seems. I, I think Treasure Beach battled well for the first sixty to seventy minutes. It was two one. Then the red card came and then Waterhouse clinical finishes, Andre Fletcher and company and just took it away from them. But um, a spirited performance by Treasure Beach and so I, I I look at the Treasure Beach team and I think that they could survive in this league based on their their mindset, their resilience, um, and their fight. But yeah, Waterhouse, back to goal scoring ways. Yeah. Um, what's Harbourview's problem, though? Astonishing that a, a good team like Harbourview has uh, waited so long for the first win of the season. And every time I see Ludlow Bernard in a, in a post match interview, he looks miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, he was leading 2 0. And I, I think he realized at that point that, look, this is an opportunity for us to take the game totally away from Lime Hall. And he was off his bench, very animated, quarreling with his players. And he was leading 2 0. Because I think he realized that what has been happening for Harborview this season is that they have had some real defensive errors. And it's so surprising because, as you said, this team has been together for some time, especially the back line. Three season defenders, you're talking about Harding, um, Talbot and Brackenridge. So they have been around for some time, but yet the, the cohesiveness is not there as we are used to. And it has cost them. But at 2-0, he was up off his bench, got the third, and then he relaxed. Yeah, utilising youngsters, Chris, is nothing new for teams like Harborview um, and the Cavalier, who we've seen win the Premier League with very young units. But... Are we seeing more than ever before players between the age of, let's say, 17 and 22 doing well in the Jamaica Premier League? Getting opportunities. I, doing well is, is relative. Mm. Um, not looking totally out of place. I'll agree with you with that. I think more opportunities, especially the fact that now with so much television involved, we have a lot of our players um, getting exposure outside of Jamaica, so going away, not necessarily to the English Premier League or Serie A, even though we've now finally had a player there, but to some of the lesser leagues as well, um, professional opportunity. So with that, it brings gaps, I think, in the team structure and has allowed for a lot of these players to get opportunities. Also, bearing, bearing the fact that a lot of these coaches also coach at the high school level, so they know these players very well. So, so are you suggesting that you're not completely impressed with what you are seeing from the youngsters, despite the push to have more and more of them play in the JPL? I am impressed with the fact that they are getting there and not looking out of place. So they are managing the level as to whether they are setting a place alight, no. I don't think it's got to that. So it's a totally different level. Obviously, you're now playing against the adult male. I think the expectations sometimes may be a little bit too high. But a lot of them have come in and done admirably. David Reed has taken a while to find his foot in. Now finally gets two goals. He played for what? The Chapelton Maroons last season. So some of these players, and when you look at even some of the young players who have come straight out of school, you think of, um, you know, Dwayne Atkinson, who, was at, who is at Cavalier and was away on loan. And Trayvon Reed, for example, you think, boy, these players are so young, they've come straight out of high school. No, yeah. they have been playing for two or three seasons before they've really started putting together yeah. numbers. So it does take a while. But um, so Adrian Reed, who is still in school, I saw Gooden get an opportunity as well for Cavalier. Alex Xavier Gooden, yeah. And, and yeah, Adrian Reed has been playing for a couple of seasons. Up to last year, Adrian Reed was still playing in the Colts under 16 league in Jamaica. Yeah. So, and as I said, doesn't look out of place, but by no means you would say they are in the top 10 of Premier League players, but I think that will take a while. It's good to see them getting an introduction, and I think in terms of, um, you know, enhancing their pro career, that will help. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to Mon uh, Sunday's matches now, because uh, Mount Pleasant, for only the second time in their history, they had back-to-back -back losses mid-season last, last season. season. I think to, well, Waterhouse was one of the teams that beat them, and I think Malines, but since they started playing 2019, they haven't had back-to-back -back losses apart from that one I just mentioned and this one here. Having said that, they are still leading. Any worries for Mount Pleasant and uh, their coach, Tampa Whitmore? Well, in talking to Theodore, he doesn't seem overly concerned. If you think two seasons ago, I know Mount Pleasant did fall short under Wally Downs. There was a, they had gone eight or nine matches, I think it was, without defeat. Yes. And then all of a sudden, they went through a bad road. And in any league across the world, you have situations like that. You look at even Manchester City in the English Premier League, they're going through a bad rut. So 
I'm not surprised that Mount Pleasant will have a bad segment, yes. if you want so to say. But it's just a stutter. I, I think so. I yeah. think they're both. But I think the quality of their team and the depth of their squad, they, yeah. will, they will eventually get it yeah. right. But kudos to yeah. Linval Dixon and, and, and Vera United. Yeah, that was an upset big result. W big upset result, wasn't it? Just before we go, though, a, a quick comment on, on Tivoli and, and Justin Dunn and his goal-scoring form. I think he's at a Nine. goal per match at the moment, which is remarkable. Nowhere in world football players score better than a goal per match. Well, Harry Kane has, <laughs> has 20, ma 20 goals in, in 14 matches so far, but that's not the norm. No. Mbappé and all of the leading scorers, Haaland is not at a goal per match. No. And Dunn has a goal per match at the moment for Tivoli. He didn't score Sunday, though. No, but he's doing very well. I, I nine goals so far, the leading goal scorer in the league. And to think that he's just 20 years of age, yes. Justin Dunn. He another one of the youngsters. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> didn't actually play at the high school level because COVID interfered, was mm. away for a while, was on the books at Kingston College, but then COVID came and disrupted his, his progress there. But last season only scored two goals. Yes. And to think that of, of how well he's doing now, I mean, it's remarkably his progress. But Tivoli, well, basically the same squad they had last year. So Jerome Waite obviously getting in the minds of these players and doing what he does well. He knows how to win titles and he has them believing. Yeah. And so far, Tivoli scoring a lot of goals and, and getting the wins. Yeah, as usual, the Ryan Nevue Jamaica Premier League exciting. And it's on Sportsmax every weekend and on a Monday night as well. And there are from time to time midweek matches as well. Chris, thanks for stopping by to talk to us about oh, the Ryan Nevue Jamaica Premier League. We have more to come on the Sportsmax zone after the break.